Oppenheimer, great movie, moral of the story, be careful who you hang out with. Oppenheimer is Chris Nolan's newest movie, and to me, it really shows the evolution of his filmmaking. Going from comic book movies to very intellectual puzzles to more action, and this is a new step in his development. This movie is one of the most intense movies I have ever seen, and it has zero action. To be honest, when I got out of the theater, I was completely exhausted. When I got into the car after the movie, I almost started crying. I don't even know why. This movie is just so packed with moral conflicts, with betrayal, with loyalty. I, I just didn't even know how to feel. All I knew is that that was awesome, that was epic, and now I'm going to break down in my car. This movie is about Robert Oppenheimer and who is considered the father of the atomic bomb and their project to create the atomic bomb during World War II. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of content that happens before they even begin making the bomb, and there is lots of content after the bomb is complete. So if don't come into this movie thinking the, the culmination of this entire film is going to build up to the bomb is created, we win the war, that's the end of the movie. It is so much deeper than that. The movie is three hours long, and to me, it felt like three hours long, but I was so engaged that I didn't mind. I did watch this movie in IMAX, which was a visually stunning experience, and people don't talk enough about how one of the biggest part of IMAX is how loud it is. No doubt that contributed to how intense I thought this movie was. If you do choose to see this movie, I want to make sure that you get as much out of it as you could. It would be helpful to understand a little bit about the theory of relativity and how atom bombs actually work. I was fortunate to go through a phase in my life where I was researching all about atoms and how atomic energy and fission worked. So having that background, it was helpful to understand at some points what the scientists were talking about. There are a couple of scenes where you can tell they're trying to spoon feed you the science saying, hey, let's have someone explain how this actually works so the audience knows what's going on. But it happens so fast and it's not done very simplistically. So it would help you going to the movie with a little bit of background, at least, of how an atom bomb works. You don't need to know a ton, but at least a little bit about, you know, the basics of you have uh, an atom, which is highly unstable, usually in the form of uranium or plutonium. An atom has protons, neutrons, and electrons. What you're going to do is try to overload that atom, which will send off neutrons. Those neutrons will hit other atoms, which overloads it, which send off even more neutrons, creating this chain uh, chain link effect that continues to build and grow. And one of the questions they address in this movie is, what if that chain effect continues and we blow up the entire world? There's also probably a hundred, it feels like, scientists in this movie, and they all play a significant role. And I was fortunate enough, once again, to have an understanding, having studied... Uh, some of the great scientists throughout history. I knew the story of Oppenheimer more or less, and so I knew who these characters were, and that was very helpful to me. I could understand that if you came into this movie not knowing any of this, you might be a little bit confused about, wait, who was that scientist again? What was their name? Um, I'm forgetting what was their relationship? What part did they work on? So I'm going to put down in the link a quick video that talks about how atomic bombs work that you can watch in a quick video giving a very very high level overview of Oppenheimer and his story. This this story is based off true events so it's not going to spoil anything because it's public knowledge but it's going to give you a tiny glimpse of some background information so that you're not confused but not enough to give away the whole story. 
And speaking about the number of scientists and characters in this movie, this movie has a star-studded cast. As you watch the film, you're going to be recognizing so many actors that you'll be like, wow, I didn't even know they were going to be in this movie. So absolutely star-studded cast. No surprise because everyone loves Christopher Nolan films. Killian Murphy, who plays Oppenheimer, is absolutely going to win some type of award. I'm not sure which one it is. His ability to display emotion, his ability to display conflict, to show confidence, to show hurt, is just unbelievable. And if you watch real interviews of Oppenheimer, he matches his voice and his tone pretty well. Because Oppenheimer spoke in a very distinct way. I want to make sure that you have the right expectations going into this movie so you can enjoy it. I feel like the trailers for this movie didn't portray what it's really about. This movie is not about winning World War II. This movie is not about the creation of the bomb. This movie is about being the man who created the most deadly weapon in human history and what are the moral fallouts from that. This movie addresses, addresses questions like, after the bombing of Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki, do you feel like you have the blood on your hands if you were one of the scientists? It addresses questions like, should the United States share nuclear secrets with other countries after World War II to ensure that everyone is regulated rather than keeping it to yourself? Part of this movie, you're going to be so conflicted. You're going to have so many of these moral choices to make during the film afterward. You're going to be sorting it out in your mind. Did Oppenheimer do the right thing? Did another character do the right thing? This movie does take a very pro Oppenheimer stance. If you know the history, it's actually very controversial when it comes to Oppenheimer, the nuclear bomb, and the Soviet Union at the time. This movie is very clear that they're on the side of Oppenheimer and they believe his account of how things happened. But, but in the actual world and the history, it's much more of a, you know, you can choose this side or you can choose that side and it's very split. Just like every other Christopher Nolan movie you've seen, the timeline is going to be all over the place. It may not be as crazy as some of his past couple films with Tenet, or Dunkirk, but this movie is going to bounce to sometime in the 50s, then suddenly bounce to the 30s, then bounce to the 40s, and Christopher Nolan does use some color coding black and white film to show you which period you are in, but knowing the history of what is going on helped me understand, okay, I'm, I know that I'm. this scene right now is taking place in the 50s or this scene is taking place in the 40s. The film doesn't necessarily tell you. It will just cut to a different timeline and you have to assume that yourself. Now the actual buildup to creating the bomb in their very first test is some of the most intense you're ever going to feel in the cinema. I was almost shaking in my seat. And, and it was so scary. And then when the actual bomb explodes, I don't want to give anything away. But just know the way that Christopher Nolan displays the bomb going off is him trying to show an artistic view. It may not be what you expect. So take that into account. There were a couple of times when they referenced some of the effects of World War of, of dropping the bomb in Japan. I wish they would have showed some of the more graphical nature of that just to just so you can empathize a little bit more with how many people actually died in this situation and how horrific it was because uh, because sometimes dialogue doesn't just doesn't necessarily explain how horrific the bomb must have been so overall this movie was unbelievably good it is one of my favorite christopher nolan movies and it shows his evolution as as a director he doesn't need these huge action scenes to create intensity he can create intensity with music and with dialogue, and you are going to be on the absolute edge of your seat. Honestly, 10 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. Either one of those could be good answers. Just a disclaimer, 
This movie is rated R and you are going to hear some very intense language and there are a few very graphically sexual scenes. If you're not into that, that's something that I try to avoid in movies. Just be aware of that. Thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you think of this. Did you re resonate with Oppenheimer? Did you resonate with some of the other characters in the film? Who do you think had the moral high ground? Did they make the correct decisions in this film? How did Christopher Nolan create intensity for you through dialogue? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Have a nice day.